This question is for Guante, um, uh, who has a series of just wonderful editorials in Oakland season. Um, and he wrote one on, on what the arts activist scene in Twin Cities could look like. So, I, I, Guante, could you just uh, elaborate on, you know, some of the ideas in that piece? And, and, and then I'd sort of like all of you to address that question. So it's funny, when you ask that question, or when you sent me that question, I, I revisited the piece, and I've noticed things about where I was at and where I'm at now and how much credit I give to a lot of people in this room. I mean, it probably goes without saying, but we should say it, like there's so much brilliance in this room right now in terms of elders, in terms of youth, in terms of our peers, like, and I'm really endlessly appreciative of that, living in this community and being able to kind of bounce ideas off each other and hear people. And so that's all, all to say that I looked at this list of things I've been writing about, like what, what could things look like? And I mean, I'll, I'll go through it and then I'll make an observation about these things. Like one is more all ages shows, more all ages venues. I mean, I'm a very, very practical thinker. So this is a list of kind of practical things. And like, for me, that's one of the, the biggest ones. And I think particularly coming from the hip hop community, I think um, hip hop artists can do a better job of thinking outside the box. Like we don't have, like maybe this is easier for theater folks and, and spoken word people, but I think hip hop artists, like we don't have to play nightclubs. We can play theaters, we can play coffee shops, we can play different types of spaces. And so in order to make those shows all ages, right? Um, I talked about stuff like the intentional sharing of access and resources. Because in terms of if you know about a grant and a bunch of other people don't know about it, like let them know and like how those types of conversations can happen. Um, more organic partnerships between artists and activist organizations um, in terms of not just being like, hey, come to my fundraiser and, put, and do a poem. Like how can we really think about our approach to this work and how we can integrate those things and learn from each other, et cetera. Um, more intentional signal boosting. And again, I'm a big social media person for better or worse. And what I mean by that is like, a lot of times an artist who may have 100,000 Twitter followers will retweet an activist organization or a movement or an event that maybe has 300 Twitter followers, right? And like, that's a cool thing. I just think it could be more intentional, where it's not just like, I happen to see something, so I happen to retweet it, but just, again, building more like relationships between artists and activist organizations. I think of, um, you know, when Toki Wright goes to the Minnesota Voices for Racial Justice, racial justice report card presentation last week, um, you know, that 7,000 extra people that know about what's happening and could potentially plug in what's happening. Again, very, very practical thing. Um, the other one I, I've noticed was uh, reimagining performance space. So it's not just I'm going to stand at the front of this big room and I'm going to be brilliant and everyone's going to clap and then we're all going to go home. But like, how can performance space not just be space for performance, but be, be a place where we can, yeah, where we can all kind of contribute to that. And I think spoken word is a great example of how that can work when, when it works. <laughs> um, but again, looking at all, at all these things, I noticed just how, how individual they are and how it's like individual artists or individual organizations making choices to operate differently as opposed to kind of reimagining the larger structures of how these things are happening and like the space in which they're happening. Um, you know, again, to play off a lot, a lot of what Sean was talking about, how can we go further than these things that we can do as individuals? Well, also, I mean, I agree with all these things, but I don't think any of them by themselves or maybe even all of them together are enough to you know, redistribute power and resources and wealth. Um, the, the metaphor I keep coming back to is, particularly as a touring artist, I travel a lot and I play shows and I know that when I play shows and facilitate conversations, I know that that's good work, you know, if I can big myself up. But I guess the metaphor is like, we always talk about planting seeds as artists. I can skip around the country and plant seeds like Johnny Appleseed and like, I think the thing I've been thinking about is the difference between planting wildflowers and planting crops. Like it's very easy as an artist to just throw throw seeds out and see what kind of flowers come up. But is, can there be a, a more intentionality in terms of how can we really plant crops that can sustain communities and that can you know radically change how things are? And I don't have the answers to that. I think that's part of why I'm excited about this event. Um, and the other thing I just noticed, like the Walker Twelve Years a Slave thing, the Ordway Miss Saigon thing, the NPR the current state of hip hop thing, the Button Poetry True Art True Art Speaks thing, like. Those are kind of the, the hooks that we're hanging this conversation on, and they're all kind of crisis-based, short-term things. And how can we move beyond that framework, too?
just sort of open up that question about arts activism and all the issues if people any of you want to chime in on that what should be done <laughs> yeah I mean uh, uh, okay well let, let me pause it I, I mean, say I'm somebody at the walker right and you know I, I, there was a whole if you can follow the if you go to uh, the open letter on Opine Season, you'll follow a whole line of arguments that go down it. And some of them, you know, just blew my mind. And somebody, in defense of the walker, they said, uh, well, even I feel uncomfortable at the walker. As if that was, <laughs> that was a good thing about the walker. You know? Um, but I, I, I think these issues of power, it's like, how, how do we actually, both from on the ground and, and, and uh, among us artists, how do we deal with it? But it, it, it also institutions are struggling with this. And you know, I, I, I wrote an editorial Alpine season just, do we need these huge institutions? Because if you look at the amount of money that the Guthrie consumes or the Minnesota Orchestra consumes or the Walker consumes, and who goes to these institutions, Right, as opposed to, do we need, you know, one of the things I think structurally, do we need a lot of smaller community-based organizations? You know, because it's like, to, to say that the walker is going to reach, say, the Somali community, that's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's like, go to people in the Somali community and fund them, rather than fund the walker for a, for a program to bring the Somali community into the walker. So that, that would be one policy change, I would say, is just have many more smaller grants to smaller community-based organizations. Also, geographically, have institutions based uh, uh, throughout the city in a more equitable fashion. But I, I, I guess, you know, what other suggestions do you think for, you know, because you have some policy people and grants makers here in the audience, so this is your chance to, Tell them what you think should be done. <laughs>